good city can make people much happier. What we have is, in, in the United States alone, a billion miles of road. It would cover all of Ohio and Pennsylvania and then some. We need to walk in order to be happy. And I think the challenge in the 21st century is how to take what we have now and reconfigure it, redesign it, and replan it. There are arguments to say that the fundamental purpose of a city is transportation, that it is mobility, that it is so that you have a short travel time between yourself and the things you want in your life. But it's really the mindset of bringing everything we're driving to within walking distance. Walking in a city should not only be totally safe for a child, it should be a pleasure. For the biggest, the most overpowering of the landscape is the highway overpass. And so if we change what mobility means, if we change what travel and transportation are, and we put them on the Moore's Law curve of computers, suddenly everything we thought about a city changes. Urban highways are like poisonous rivers. All the wars in the history of the United States, going back to the Revolutionary War, have killed fewer people than people with steering wheels in their hands. We should see a dramatic reduction in collisions and a dramatic reduction in pedestrian fatalities. That is one of the most promising things of driverless vehicles. The idea that imagining life without a car is very difficult for a lot of people who lived in the United States their whole lives. We already have generations growing up for the first time in America saying, I don't need to own a car. People who are rapidly aging, mobility is a huge concern for them. The mere fact that we can bring mobility to more people is in itself a huge economic opportunity. In the US today, it's about $9,000 per year to own and operate your own car, and it's about 18% of your household income, yet they only used it 5% of the time. The smart car of the future will be a, a car that is not really owned by one person, it's shared by many people. And if you don't need a car to get to work, you're now having this big depreciated mass of $125 a week that is just flying by. Garages can be used for things much more important than storing cars, like starting companies. The mindsets of how we get from place to place. This is going to, in, in many ways, reinvent cities, reinvent life for people. Sometimes we have these realities that are in front of our nose, and we do not even see how horrible it is what we have today. What we have is something which we didn't anticipate, which is paving over the world for tools that basically double glaze the planet. By 2100, we'll be plus four degrees Celsius or plus seven degrees Fahrenheit in global climate change. Humans have never existed at those temperatures. The, the more worrisome impact comes not from ozone, but from small particles. For example, soot. These small particles can penetrate, the particular very small ones, penetrate deeply in, in, into the lungs. So those are the ones that do cause premature mortality. The most sensitive victims are the many generations of people yet to be born, based on climate modeling, that the effects will go on for millennia. And so what we do today, and what we do in the next 20, 30, 50 years will be crucial. And that's, I think, going to be a different mindset where we, we all of a sudden don't think about just a car. We think about transportation. Imagine a future where you're looking at an intersection and you think, a human couldn't possibly drive in there. That's what we're heading into when we have you know, machines controlling machines. Most important part of the car of the future is not the engine anymore. It is the computer inside it. Making it possible to have this door-to-door -door wayfinding, door-to-door -door mapping of what you can do next and what your options are. We may use two or three sources of transportation along the way, and that's just going to become the way of life. Because the technology itself encourages empowerment of individuals and uh, not having to have an intermediary uh, that sets the rules. So a lot of this technology is enabling the connectivity of these systems, the logistics management that is co quite complex, the real-time understanding of where these vehicles are, where the demand for these vehicles are, and the possibility of moving them around quickly and seamlessly. This is really like, you know, T1 speeds wirelessly for it to work. We're talking about billions of, you know, terabytes of data simultaneously moving around um, every second across the, the transportation network. And it is enabling a whole new future in mobility. Mobility is a foundation to sustainability. 
And all of these different industries are coming together and they're beginning to work with city leaders and work with NGOs, uh, work with citizens to start connecting the dots. Building a, a new relationship between industry and government, there's going to have to be a lot of sharing of data and a lot of transparency. How will we change the shape of the cities by taking full advantage of the potential for transformation that autonomous vehicles present? The formulas that have been put in place with the federal government for the last 60 years have been add, add, add. So rather than widening freeways, we have to start optimizing the freeways. If you're going to have shared use vehicle systems, you're going to have autonomous vehicles, there's going to be a land use component to that. More demand-based incentives, more performance-based incentives so that we're moving more people through those corridors rather than moving more of the vehicle. How do we make sustainable mobility better? How do we make public transit better? How do we make not owning a vehicle better? That's uh, a shift both uh, of technology, uh, but also of marketing, and also of, of modeling that uh, from peer to peer, uh, friend to friend, community to community. And the collective coming together to find solutions uh, in a democracy like the United States uh, is something that's very important. But it begins actually uh, in your personal life uh, your personal habits, how you lead your life. This is fundamental to how we want our cities and how we want our lives to be over the next few generations.